Hello students. Today we will learn the basic properties of electric charges. So in the previous class we have learned that there are two types of charges available. One is positive and the other one is negative charge. And their effect in a body cancels out. If number of positive charge is equal to number of negative charge then the body is said to be neutral then body is said to be neutral what does a neutral body means a body which is having balanced positive and negative charges on it secondly the charged bodies are said to be point charges when distance between the two charged body is compar comparatively very large like we have these two bodies of small masses and distance between them is large and very large than the radius or the size of the body at this particular point these two charge carrying bodies or the charged bodies are known as point mass And when we deal with a body, like this is a body having charge uh, uniformly distributed over all the surfaces, then it is said that the, the whole charge is concentrated, the whole charge is concentrated at the center, okay, at the center or on a one particular point in the space, okay, charge content of the body is assumed to be concentrated on at one point in space the first basic property of charged particle is additive nature additive nature of the charges charges can be added like the numbers we add like 1 plus 2 equals to 3 similar way we can uh, add the charge q1 plus q2 equals to some 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 sum okay if a system contains two point charges q1 and q2 the total charge of the system is obtained simply by adding algebraically okay we are algebraically adding them charges add up like real numbers like 1 2 3 4 the general addition we do okay so these charges are similar as the mass of a body are charges similar to mass of mass of body okay like uh, what is the property of the mass then like you are buying some 500 grams of substance A okay substance A you are buying 500 grams and the other substance you uh, got around 250 grams so how much did you get 750 grams right they are added masses are simply added 500 plus 750 right it is simply added sorry that is 250 simply added and it became 750 it is general addition in the similar way our uh, charges also get generally added up okay we do not need to uh, have some specific formula like the way we do vector addition uh, for uh, forces okay for distance we don't need to use any kind of vector addition for the charges it is as simple as the numbers we add up now so this particular statement tells us that our charges are scalar in nature charges are scalar this is very much important point like looking at this point according to the board examination as well as according to the competitive examination usually there will be questions arising like find out which of the following is not a scalar quantity 
three options will be given to you and one option among the three will be charge charge so as charges are positive and as charges are negative you may get confused that charges are not scalar but charges are scalar only difference between a mass and a charge is that charge can either be positive or negative but mass is always positive okay now we are talking about a system of charges which is containing n number of charges n number of charges implies amount of number of charges that is not definite like we have so many charges so we define it as n number of charges so the charge present in the system is having q1 q2 q3 and till qn charges then the total charge of the system how much will it be it is very simple it will be q1 plus q2 plus q3 till qn okay see the next point as explained earlier charges has magnitude but no direction similar to mass okay no direction what is the definition of vector what is definition of vector vector are the quantities having quantities having magnitude as well as direction so whatever charges a scalar quantity charge do have magnitude but there is no directional direction available for the charges they are not directional in nature but the next point as you can see mass of a body is always positive whereas charge can be either positive or negative proper signs have to be issued while adding up the charges in a system it is very much necessary for us to identify whether the charge is negative or positive and accordingly we have to do the addition so like it's not been explained over here i'll explain here kindly pay attention so we are having a system of charge system and in this we have q1 equals to plus 1 q2 equals to plus 2 q3 equals to minus 3 q4 equals to minus 4 and q5 equals to plus 5 okay now we need to add up q total what is the charge inside this body this body is having all the charges q1 q2 q3 q4 q5 okay all the charges this body is having all the charges now we have to find the total number of charges the total amount of charge which is present here in this body so q total will be q1 plus q2 plus q3 plus q4 plus q5 okay now what is q1 plus 1 plus plus 2 plus minus 3 plus minus 4 plus plus 5 right these are the values we are adding up everything but we are taking care of the magnitude of the charge too whether the magnitude is positive or negative now plus 1 plus plus 2 is plus 3 plus minus 3 will be minus 3 plus minus 4 will be minus 4 and plus plus of 5 will be plus 5 so this 3 this 4 will can cancel out 5 minus 4 how much will be the charge 1 so here the total charge q total equals to 1 1 okay one unit of charge is present in this system now going on to the second basic property that is charge is conserved what does conservation means 
charge is conserved conserve implies there is no reduction no production no destruction okay see in the previous class we have read about silk that is been rubbed with plastic as well as woolen rod okay but there is distribution and redistribution of charges no production and no destruction no production no destruction of charges is seen right in the given system of the charges we have seen the charges are transferred from the silk to the plastic or from the silk to the woolen but in both the cases these charges were neither created nor destroyed silk on the charges which was present on the silk were not destroyed and the charges which wool uh, woolen like uh, the glass rod or the plastic rod uh, got were not created okay uh, make the changes here this is not wool uh, we are talking about plastic rod and glass rod okay plastic and glass right so when we rub the bodies what one body gains in charge and the other loses okay one body gains and other loses within isolated system consisting of many charged bodies due to interaction among the bodies charge may get redistributed but it is found that the total charge of the system is always conserved uh, let us uh, understand this statement what it says within isolated system okay uh, i'll just rub this and explain you okay so what we are talking about is the isolated system isolated system are the system which do not have any contact with the outer system they will be just uh, like uh, in a, a box they will be there and we will only deal with them there will be not any interaction with the uh, atoms or electrons or charges which are present uh, outside them so this is a isolated system okay this is isolated system and we are having two uh, two particles over here okay two particles are there and this is having some charge q1 and this body is having some charge q2 okay and this whole system even here we have some little charges okay the whole system is having a charge of q whole system is having a charge of q now these two uh, charges q1 and q2 which are inside the isolated system are interacting and there is redistribution of the charges q1 plus q dash is the charge of one body and the other body is having q2 minus q dash of the charge okay what does this q implies here the total charge q is equal to q1 plus q2 but here what will happen now in this system the system is same okay system is same isolated only one and two are interacting so q2 will uh, q in like second in the second case yes in the second case our q equals to q1 plus q dash plus q2 minus q dash okay this got cancelled with this what is the charge left is q1 plus q2 so what was the initial charge q1 plus 2 q2 what was the final charge q1 plus q2 so is there any change in the charge no in this isolated system the charge is same that implies the charge is always conserved this is what the second statement says it is not possible 
to create and destroy net charge carried by any isolated system although the charge carrying particle may be created or destroyed okay one of the example for this is sometime nature creates charge particle a neutron turns into proton and an electron this is the best example okay the protons and neutrons thus created have equal and opposite charge and the total charge is zero before and after the creation okay now understanding these last three points there is this neutron inside the our nucleus in our nucleus we have neutron okay this neutron doesn't stay there inside the nucleus always sitting idly okay it will have some or the other activity going on it can interact with proton which is inside the nucleus or it can um, interact with the electron which are outside the nucleus uh, which are getting attracted to the nucleus revolving around the nucleus so it can interact this neutron which is interacting with the outer bodies will gain some energy neutron will gain some energy okay after this neutron have gained some energy it will become unstable and will try to produce some like some sub particles which can give nuclear stability to it so it will start dividing into three components that is one electron one proton and one neutrino or anti neutrino it depends upon the condition on which our neutron became unstable okay if it is interacting with the proton it will release a neutrino as the third particle and if it is interacting with the electron it will release an anti neutrino as third particle but the primary one and the two particle will be one electron and one proton so neutrino again doesn't have any charge neutrino are chargeless charge less but what about electron and proton they have same and opposite magnitude charge they have e charge as well as minus e charge minus e charge is for electron and positive e charge is for proton okay so after this neutron is divided into two particular particles still the system is having same amount of charge so charge is neither created nor dis uh, destroyed but it can get redistributed okay it can get redistributed within the system of charges now the third property is quantization of charges quantity we will just explain how much is the quantity of the charge in a system we can, uh, charge is a uh, calculatable um, unit and we can uh, learn about the presence presence of how much quantity of charge is available in a particular system okay experimentally it is established that all free charges are integral multiple of a basic unit of charge denoted by e denoted by e e is a basic unit of charge and every charge q is an integral multiple of e integral multiple implies this e is being multiplied by some integer multiplied by some integer okay our e is multiplied by some integer that's why we say it as it's a integral multiple of e and what is the value of e e is value is 1.6 into 10 to the power minus 19 coulomb what is the value of n n ka value is 1 2 3 3 up to infinity like anything whatever the amount of charges are available in the given system we have to take that like in the above system in this particular system 
how many charges we are having we are having two charges how many two charges so what is the value over here two and e is this into 1.6 into 10 to the power minus 19 coulomb what is the total charge now 3.2 into 10 to the power minus 19 coulomb is the total charge of the system okay and this e can be positive can be negative and it depends upon the charge we have taken if it is electron if it is electron value of e is minus 1.6 into 10 to the power minus 19 but if it is proton value of e is 1.6 into 10 to the power plus 1.6 into 10 to the power minus 19 coulomb always and always remember to uh, denote these values with a particular sign sign convention should always will be there as you will solve the numerical and you forget to take the sign you will get the wrong answer so always remember to understand how the we are using the signs okay when we are dealing with proton or negative charge we use negative sign before the magnitude of that charge and when we are using a proton we use a positive charge a positive symbol or a symbol of addition we do add ups and when we are dealing with neutron neutron do not have any charge the value of e for neutron is zero what is the value of e for neutron it's zero okay so this last statement see by convention charge of electron is taken negative and charge of proton is taken as positive okay So, numerically it is given electron is minus 1.6 into 10 to the power minus 19 coulomb, proton is plus 1.6 into 10 to the power minus 19 coulomb. The fact that electric charge is always integral multiple of E is termed as quantization of charges. Why it is known as quantization of charges? Because with the help of, because with the help of E we can know about the quantity of charges in a system okay in a system Quantization of the charges was first suggested by experimental laws of electrolysis and who was doing electrolysis? What is the name comes to your brain when we learn about electrolysis? It comes of Faraday. Faraday's law of electrolysis. Have you read it? So Faraday was the one who, you, uh, who have made the laws, have given uh, the laws for the electrolysis and he was experimental. Uh, experimentalist he was doing experiment on the electrolysis and at that point he gave us the concept of quantization of the charges and this was like he was doing and he gave us the concept but the thing of uh, like how these are quantized was demonstrated experimentally by Melikin so Melikin is very much famous for oil drop experiment oil drop experiment and with this experiment with this oil drop experiment what have Millikan given us he gave us e by m value charge to mass ratio charge to mass ratio we were always aware of charge e equals to 1.6 into 10 to the power minus 19 coulomb but we were not aware of the mass of the part, uh, charged particle. So, when Melikin did oil drop experiment, he found E by M value. Okay, from this E by M value, we substituted the value of E and we found out the mass of a given charged particle. So, the experiment done by Melikin in this field in finding the E by M value was uh, 
a very important step and similarly as uh, the value of E and M was found through his experiment, he has experimentally shown how the charges are being quantized. And the experiment done by Millikan was in 1912. Uh, these names of scientists and what work they did is important with respect to your uh, entrance examination. So make a separate point or a separate column for writing up these. Uh, in the SI unit in international systems of unit, unit of charge is given as coulomb. Okay, this is coulomb, C O U L O M B, and it is de denoted by capital C. Its capital C is the symbol for coulomb, and coulomb is SI unit of charge. There are two other things. Charge equals to current into time. Okay. Charge is denoted as coulomb, current is denoted as ampere and time is denoted as second. Okay, So, charge is ampere per second. C equals to ampere second. Okay, um, Q equals to I T. I is charge, T is time. Okay. So, how uh, one coulomb is defined? One coulomb we will define with respect to electric current. I have already explained the relation of current, time and charge. Okay. Now here is the statement. One coulomb is the charge flowing through a wire in one second if the current is 1 ampere. So this is our wire. Okay. This is our wire and in this wire in one second one ampere of current is flowing. So this wire how much charge it is having then this wire is having charge equals to one coulomb okay one coulomb equals to one ampere into one second right. Next, when E value of E is 1.6 into 10 to the power minus 19 coulomb, then there are about 6.18, 6 into 10 to the power 18 electrons in a charge of minus 1 coulomb. Why we have taken the charge as minus 1 coulomb? Because minus denotes symbol for electron. If we have taken it as plus 1 coulomb, it will be denoting a proton. Okay? Always look for the symbol and identify which charged particle we are talking about. In electrostatics, charges of this large magnitude are seldom encountered and hence we use a smaller unit of 1 micro coulomb. Okay? And 1 micro coulomb is equals to 10 to the power minus 6 coulomb or milli coulomb we use. Milli coulomb is 10 to the power minus 3 coulomb. If only proton and electron are basic charges available, then all observable charges are integral multiple of E. If we are not dealing with neutrons, neutrinos, antineutrinos, mesons, pi mesons, and other subparticles of uh, these atomic subatomic particles then we have to take all the charges as integral multiple of E only. Protons we can define on the basis of E. Electrons we can define on the basis of E. So basically we can define any system of charges with respect to E or any integral multiple of E. So, so in the previous slide, uh, what we were looking at was quantization. Okay. So uh, kindly make of uh, notes of this one. So we were reading about quantization and we get to know that for proton the value is plus 1.6 into 
10 to the power minus 19 coulomb and for electron it is minus 1.6 into 10 to the power minus 19 coulomb and uh, charge is uh, given in SI units by the unit called coulombs okay coulombs coulombs is denoted as capital C and now the task is task is to find how many electrons are present in one coulomb of charge in one coulomb of charge okay so what we know is charge equals to n e this we have read as the quantization uh, quantization formula this is what quantization formula formula right so we know q equals to 1 coulomb n equals to unknown to us that is what we need to find and e equals to minus 1.6 into 10 to the power minus 19 coulomb okay substituting the value n equals to q upon e and 1 coulomb divided by minus 1 0.6 into 10 to the power 19 coulomb 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 will get cancelled so we'll get a numeral value 1 by minus 1.6 into 10 to the power minus uh, 19 which will go up and will become positive okay now n equals to 1 by 1.6 into 10 to the power plus 19 as uh, n is a number and this number we will take as positive like amount of anything in a system will be positive amount of charges in the system gonna be positive gonna be positive so we will make it positive so 1 divided by 1.6 we will do the rough work over here 1 divided by sorry we have to take 1 divided by 1.6 okay we will remove this dot and we'll make it as 10 uh, let me write it clearly for you okay yes so n equals to 1 10 divided by 16 into 10 to the power plus 19 so 5 upon 8 right n equals to 5 upon 8 into 10 to the power 19 now 5 should be divided by 8 point 50 48 8 6 48 20 8 2 16 4 8 5 40 so what is the value we got we got n equals to 0 0.625 into 10 to the power 19 and now we are moving the point from our left to right so 6.25 into 10 to the power 18 charges so this is the amount of charges we are having in one coulomb this is what amount of charges or number of charges present in one coulomb of charge one coulomb of charged system like we have taken this system it is having a charge of one coulomb number of electron will come around 6.25 into 10 to the power 18 so this is a very very huge number so in the previous slide what, uh, what we saw is that the amount of amount of electrons 
in one coulomb is around 6.2 into 10 to the power 18 okay so this is a very huge number a very huge number of charged particles we are dealing charged particles we are dealing in one coulomb we are dealing in one coulomb hence we use smaller amount we use smaller uh, units okay smaller units of charge what is that that is either micro coulomb or milli coulomb this is our milli coulomb okay and this is our micro coulomb right C O U L O M B. Then, when we are dealing with this number of charges, we need to understand uh, this step size E. E is the value which is different in when we are dealing with one charge, like we are having one charge. So, what is the amount we are dealing with? 1.6 into 10 to the power 19. We are having two charge. What is the amount we are dealing with? 3.2 into 10 to the power minus 19 coulomb. If we are having three charges, what is the amount we are dealing with? 4.8 into 10 to the power minus 19. What is the increment in each step? Is 6 to the power minus 9. 19. Okay, here also same increment. So at every step, at every step, the charge is increasing by the value of E. So, E is known as step size. Step size. This is the step by which in a system charge will decrease or increase. Okay. So, when we are dealing with this, this as a step size and these many charges, we need to understand the macroscopic domain and the microscopic domain of the charges, okay. Charges, we are having two, one is macroscopic and the other one is microscopic. Now, what does macro and micro implies? Macroscopic implies something we are dealing with a huge system. In this system, we have more than thousands of electron to deal with, more than thousands of electron or proton to deal with, to deal with. And basically, they form a continuous system. They form a continuous system because they all are in a same amount of system they are there like thousands of are there we cannot uh, thousands of charged particle are there we cannot uh, identify them as discrete units no identification as discrete unit as discrete unit okay so they form a continuous system. I can explain this in this way. See, this is our circle. This is a pentagon. This is a hexagon. This is like a heptagon. Okay. So, this have five sides, six sides, seven sides. We keep on increasing it to n number of sides. We keep on increasing to n number of sides. This circle, what we say? It also have line it is also made up of line but the number of lines in circle are how many n 
we cannot count the number of lines present in a circle so similarly in a continuous system we cannot count the number of electron or the proton or the charged particles present okay that's why it is known as continuous system removal of 10 to 15 charges from a continuous system will not make a difference which is identifiable okay but when we are dealing with charges at microscopic level we deal from 10 to 100 or 1000 of particles of particles okay not more than that and in this these are discrete discrete they are countable we can count them countable as well as if there is a removal of one charge we will feel the difference like in a system we are having 10 charges and we removed one charges how many charges are left nine charges are left and that is a countable quantity we can identify there is a removal of charges okay so this one is the concept of microscopic as well as the macroscopic charges we understood what is step size we understood when we deal with a number of charges they seems to be continuous in nature but when we deal with microscopic level where we deal with only 10 to thousands of charged particle they are discrete countable and do not go and make a continuous system of charges okay we can define each and every charge at microscopic level but it is very tough to describe each and every charge at macroscopic level at macroscopic level we can define a system of charges instead of individual charges okay so this is all for today's class in this class we have learned the basic properties of the charged particle and to sum it up what are the basic uh, properties we read about the charges is that charges can never be created and can never be destroyed neither created neither created nor destroyed okay second one are quant quantizable quantization can happen in charges and they can be added as added as normal real numbers okay what this law is known as neither creation nor destroyed this is known as conservation of conservation of charges of charges okay when uh, we deal with this one masses and energy we usually read another conservation law that is energy is also conserved and when we deal with gravitational systems we say that masses are also conserved okay so conservation of charges is a basic uh, rule a basic law which one should always remember and this is very much important with respect to your entrance examination okay that's all for today's class thank you and bye bye